The discovery of the tomb of the Egyptian king Tutankhamun 100 years ago this year made headlines around the world and made celebrities of the British archaeological team involved. But a new exhibition at Oxford University is shining a new light on the other workers on that dig that history had forgotten. Roxana Saberi has the story. Unearthed in Egypt a century ago, Tutankhamun's tomb instantly became one of the greatest finds in archaeology. A 19-year-old king buried in a chamber left largely undisturbed for over 3,000 years. British excavator Howard Carter basked in the splendor of its discovery. An English archaeological expedition headed by a man named Howard Carter sought to uncover the tomb of an ancient Egyptian pharaoh, King Tutankhamun. In the decades since, the treasures have glittered across the globe. Over 1,600,000 people had queued and seen the exhibition. While Tutankhamun has taken his place in popular culture. Tut. But these portrayals, says renowned Egyptologist Richard Parkinson, hide the realities of history. The press interest, of course, and the discovery, and all the popular interest, has turned it into this sort of cultural stereotype. Tell me about that stereotype. It's the Indiana Jones one. It's the Downton Abbey School of Archaeology. He hopes this new exhibit at Oxford University challenges those views by highlighting the people of Egypt. Parkinson says dozens of Egyptians helped Carter, but most remain unnamed and uncredited. What does history tell us about the Egyptian members of Carter's team? Not enough. The archive, of course, is a British archive. It's compiled in a colonialist period. Delving into Carter's archive stored at the university, Parkinson picked out pieces, like these photos of a boy posing in a necklace from the casket. It's where the jewelry belongs, on the necks of an Egyptian teenager. The problem is we don't know his name. Why is his name not known? Because he was simply a mannequin. Other images show Egyptians unsealing doorways, conducting the post-mortem, and carrying crates. They were very skilled, but they didn't have, say, the university education that we would expect of an archaeologist these days. And because they couldn't tell their own story, they remained anonymous. They have remained anonymous. Carter did thank his four Egyptian foremen, but even today, curators can't match their names with their faces. Ahmed Gerigar is the best known. Somewhere in these photographs, we will have his face, but we cannot from the archive, identify which man he is. In Egypt, Professor Hend Mohammed Abdel Rahman says she's identified 11 other Egyptian team members. I found their descendants. And that Carter actually kept a record of everyone's name, but somehow it was lost. So you're hopeful that one day these Egyptians will get their credit? Yes, of course, of course. And uh, I believe they will do this one day. Back at Oxford, Parkinson hopes these glimpses into the past will inspire others to fill in the blanks of history. I think we have not heard the end of the Tomb of Tutankhamun. For CBS Saturday Morning, Roxana Saberi, Oxford, England. I remember visiting the exhibit, you know, in Los Angeles. It come from so far away. But, I mean, it just heightens this notion that these, these men uh, of the colonial era or post-colonial era were the one that made all of these discoveries. And there's so many other people involved who had the expertise because they knew. They knew the history and the lore and where to look. And it's nice to see the stories uncovered now, especially with this. You hope that time hasn't done away with the ability to actually uncover and know who they are. As he said, we've not heard the end of the story. I like that. I like that.